Journey to the West, an audio drama series. Chapter Fifteen, Part One. We speak now of Xing Zhe accompanying the Tang monk as they traveled westward. Several days passed. As they enter into the frigid days of midwinter, the chill of the north wind blew, freezing their surroundings. Tortuous cliffside roads with slippery ice and gorges, as well as parlous tiers of mountain ranges, were the only way before them. San Zhang was riding the horse when he picked up the sound of a running current from afar. He turned around to ask, "Wu Kong, where is the sound of water coming from?" Xing Zhe answered, "I remember this place. It is called Shu Pan Shan Yin Chou Jian, the Eagle's Grief Stream of Stick Coil Mountain. It must be the water from the stream making noise." Before they finished, the horse had arrived at the stream. San Zhang reined in to inspect this spectacular place. Cold rivulets like veins ran through the fog as the clear waves reflected the red sun. By night it sang with the rain; by day it dazzled the skies with morning glow. Water splashed like broken jade, roaring against the cool breeze. Truly, a place to let go of worldly troubles. Master and disciple were enjoying the scenery when they heard a splash from the stream as a dragon emerged from the water. It pushed through waves and leapt above the cliffs, coming straight at the elder. Panicking, Xing Zhe threw away the luggage and carried his master off the horse before running away for good. The dragon couldn't catch up to them, so he swallowed the white horse along with the saddle in one gulp into his stomach. Returning into the water, it remained submerged as before. Xing Zhe brought his master to higher ground and let him sit down before returning for the horse and luggage. But all he could find was the luggage; the horse was nowhere to be found. He took the luggage back to his master and said, "Master, that cursed dragon is gone without a trace. It must have scared the horse away." San Zhang asked, "Disciple, how are you going to find the horse?" Xing Zhou replied, "Worry not, worry not. Let me go have a look." He whistled and hopped into midair. Fire eyes and golden pupils in place, he put one hand on his forehead as shade and scanned in all directions. But still, the horse was nowhere to be seen. Lowering his cloud, he reported to his master. Master, our horse must have been eaten by that dragon. I couldn't find it anywhere. San Zhang said, "Disciple, how big a mouth could that creature?" Possibly have that it devoured a huge horse along with the saddle. It must have been frightened and run away, getting caught in one of the valleys. Do look closer, won't you? Xing Zhou explained, "You have no idea about my powers. This pair of eyes that I possess can witness the good and evil within a thousand li in broad daylight. Within this range, I can see even a dragonfly spreading its wings." Not to mention a thing as large as a horse. How could I not see it? San Zhang asked. If he did eat it, how do I go forward then? Poor me! How am I going to cross all the mountains and rivers ahead? As he spoke, tears fell from his eyes like rain. Xing Zhe saw him cry and could no longer control his temper as he shouted in a loud voice. Master, stop acting like a helpless coward. You can just sit here, sit right here. Let Elderson go find that wretched thing and have it return the horse to us. But then San Zhang clutched him and said, "Disciple, where are you going to find it? What if it sneaks up with a leap and hurts me as well? When both man and horse are dead, what are we to do?" Xing Zhe heard this and only grew angrier, letting out a thunderous rant. You are hopeless, hopeless. You want to ride a horse, but you won't let me go find it. Why don't you stare at the luggage and sit here till you die? Yelling angrily, there was no end to his frustration. Just then, someone could be heard speaking from the air. Great sage Sun, be not irked. Royal younger brother of Tang, do not cry. 
We are deities sent here by Guanyin Bodhisattva specifically to give the scripture seeker secret protection. The elder heard this and hurriedly began kowtowing. Xingzhu asked, Who are you people? State your titles so I can make a roll call. The deities answered, We are the six gods of the ordinal Ding and six gods of the ordinal Jia, guardians of the five quarters, four chroniclers of time and eighteen divine protectors of the monastery. We take turns to be on duty every day. Xingzhu asked, Who's in attendance today? The guardians answered, The Dings and Jias, chroniclers and protectors of the monastery are in rotation. Within us, the guardians of the five quarters, only the golden head guardian stays by your side day and night. Xingzhu then said, If that's the case, those not on duty may leave. The six gods of the ordinal Ding, the chroniclers of day and the guardians shall remain and protect my master. Wait till Elderson finds that cursed dragon in the stream and have it return the horse to me. The deities obeyed, and only then did San Zhang feel relieved enough to sit on the rocky cliff and order Xingzhu. Do be very careful. Xingzhu replied, Just relax. Splendid Monkey King, straightening his cotton robe and hitching up his tiger skin skirt. With the golden hooped iron rod in hand, he heightened his spirits and arrived right by the stream. Amidst cloud and fog, he yelled from the top of his voice above the water. You unruly pond loach! Give me back my horse! Give me back my horse! We now turn to the dragon who ate San Zhang's white horse. He was laying at the bottom of the stream, calming his mind when he heard someone insulting him over a horse. Unable to control the raging flames inside, he quickly flipped out of the waves and leapt up, asking, Who is there daring to insult me with their big mouth? Xingzhu saw him and shouted loudly, Don't you go, give me back the horse. With the swing of the rod, he went straight for the dragon's head. The dragon also unleashed his fangs and claws to grab him. The two fought by the stream, and what a fierce fight it was. Look at them. The dragon stretched his sharp claws, the monkey raised his golden hooped rod. The whiskers of one hung like threads of white jade, the eyes of the other flashed like red golden lamps. There, under his whiskers, a pearl-puffed mist of rainbow colors. Here, in his hands, an iron rod danced like a fierce wind. That one was the cursed son who perplexed his parents, this one was a spirit who bullied generals divine. Both of them were suffering from plight. To succeed now required each to show their might. And so back and forth, the two fought and hovered for a long time. The dragon was losing his strength and becoming sore, no longer able to go against his opponent. So he turned around and darted into the water. Diving deep into the bottom of the stream, he refused to poke his head out any more. Even when the Monkey King kept throwing insults at him, he could only pretend to not hear. Xingzhu was out of his depths, so he could only go back to San Zhang, telling him, Master, that monster could stand my insults and came out. We fought for a long while before he escaped in fear. He's now hiding in the water and won't come out again. San Zhang asked, Are you sure he really is the one who ate my horse? Xingzhu said, Listen to what you're saying. If he didn't eat it, why would he even respond and go against me? San Zhang remarked, when you fought that tiger the other day, you claim to have the skills to subdue dragons and tigers. Why can't you subdue this one today? It turned out that the monkey simply couldn't stand such provocation. Hearing San Zhang mock him with his own words, he lashed out in a divine fury. No more talk, no more talk. Let me go again and see which one of us comes on top. And so, in wide strides, the monkey king leapt to the edge of the stream, Using his powers to throw rivers and seas into turmoil, he turned the clear see-through water of Eagle's Grief Stream into the brimming muddy waves of the meandering Yellow River. The culpable dragon hid in the depths of the stream, uneasy and disturbed. He thought to himself, This is truly, blessings never come in pairs and misfortune never comes singly. 
and have only just escaped the death penalty for breaking heavenly laws less than a year ago. I was just going by my day when I ran into this wretched monster. He's coming after my life. Look at him. The more he thought about it, the angrier he became. Unable to swallow the humiliation, he gritted his teeth and jumped out, cursing. Where are you wretched monster from? Why are you bullying me like this? Xingzhou replied. None of your business where I'm from. Just give me back the horse and I will spare your life. The dragon said, I swallowed your horse into my stomach. How could I spit it out? I'm not giving it back. What are you going to do about it? Xingzhou yelled, If you're not giving it back, then watch my rot. I'll just kill you to pay back for the horse's life then. The two once again started a bitter fight below the cliff. Not many rounds passed before the young dragon was truly struggling to hold up. So he shook his body and transformed into a water snake before wriggling into the grass. The monkey king held his stick and chased forward, parting the grass to search for the snake. Yet not a shadow or sound could be traced. This angered all the dark spirits within him, and drove him so mad as if smoke was pouring out of all his orifices. He recited a spell starting with the word um, and quickly summoned the local tutelary of soil and mountain god. The deities came forward together and prostrated to say, We, the mountain god and tutelary of soil, have arrived. Xingzhou said, Put forward your ankles and let me give each one of you five strikes by the rod as greeting gift to relieve my temper. The two gods kowtowed as they begged. May the great sage be so generous as to allow these humble deities to make a confession. Xingzhu asked, What are you talking about? The two gods explained, The great sage has been in prison for so long that we had no idea when you would come out, hence the lack of reception. We beg you to forgive our sins. Xingzhu said, if that's the case, I will not hit you. Let me ask you, where did that cursed dragon in the eagle's grief stream come from? Why did he rob my master's horse for food? The two gods answered, The great sage has never had a master before. You used to be a supreme immortal unbound by either heaven or earth. Where did this master's horse come from? Xingzhou explained, You have no idea. I suffered for the past five hundred years for that business of offending heaven. Now, thanks to Guan Yin Bodhisattva's kind persuasion, I have come to the side of good. She sent a true monk from the Tang court to save me and take me in as a disciple, heading on a journey to the West Heaven to see Buddha and seek scriptures. It just happens that we passed by this place and lost my master's horse. The two gods said, So that's what happened. This stream was never home to any wicked beings. It runs wide and deep, and the water is crystal clear through the bottom. Crows and magpies dare not fly across, for the water is so clear that they would mistake their own reflections for birds of the same flock, leading them to plunge themselves into the water. Hence the name Eagle's Grief Stream. It happened that a few years ago, Guan Yin Bodhisattva was on her way to find a scripture seeker when she rescued a culpable dragon and sent him here. She instructed him to wait for a scripture seeker and do no wrong. Only when he hungered would he come ashore to catch birds or deer for food. We had no idea that he would be so ignorant that he would offend the great sage today. Xingzhou said, in our first encounter, he fought Elderson for a few rounds, but later on it was just me throwing insults at him and he won't come back up again. That's why I used a trick that throws rivers and seas into turmoil and stirred his stream into muddy water. Only then did he leap up for another fight. But he had no idea how heavy my rod is and simply couldn't handle its weight. That's why he turned into a water snake and slipped into the grass. I came to look for him but couldn't find a trace. The tutelary of soil explained, You have no idea, Great Sage. The stream is made of tens of thousands of interconnected tunnels and the channels run deep and far. I presume such a tunnel exists nearby that he slipped into. No need to be angry, Great Sage, and no need to look further. 
To capture this thing, you only have to get Guan Shi in here, and he will naturally submit. Jing Zhe took in their words and asked the mountain god and two Larry of Soil to come together to see San Zhang. They explained to him what took place. San Zhang asked, If you are going to invite Bodhisattva here, how long would that take? How could this humble cleric withstand the hunger and cold? Before he could finish, the voice of the golden head guardian could be heard from the dark skies, saying, Grey Sage, no need for you to make the trip. Allow this humble deity to go invite Bodhisattva over. Xingzhe was overjoyed and said, Thank you for the trouble. Thank you. Please head out soon and go quickly. The guardian swiftly leapt onto a cloud and went straight to the South Sea. Xing Zhe ordered the mountain god and to Larry of Soil to protect his master, and the chronicler of day to fetch a vegetarian meal. He himself, on the other hand, went back to patrol the stream. We will speak no more of that. We now go to the golden head guardian who travel on cloud and soon arrived at the South Sea. Landing in a puff of auspicious aura, he came straight down to the purple bamboo grove of Mount Podolak. After asking the golden armor deities and also Mu Cha to deliver the message, he managed to see Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva asked, What are you here for? The guardian answered, The Tang monk has lost his horse at the Eagle's Grief stream of Snake Coil Mountain. Great Sage Sun is now caught in a frustrating dilemma. When he asked the deities of the local soil, he was told that the horse was swallowed by a culpable dragon sent there by Bodhisattva. That is why the great sage sent this humble deity to ask Bodhisattva to subdue this culpable dragon and return the horse to him. Bodhisattva heard his words and said, That wretch is the son of Aurun from the West Sea. He set the palace pearls on fire and so his father accused him of disobedience. This is a crime punishable by death in the heavenly palace. It was I who went to the Jade Emperor in person, had him rescued and brought here. I told him to act as transportation for the Tang monk. How did he eat the Tang monk's horse instead? If that's what happened, I shall be there. And so Bodhisattva came down the lotus dais and left her immortal cave. Riding on a beam of auspicious light, she crossed the South Sea with the Guardian. <laughs>